hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland and this is Relax and Sleep Hypnosis Daily. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Ideally, you get yourself comfortable. Seated in a chair that supports your body or lying down, maybe on your bed or a sofa, something like that. The main thing is that you're comfortable, remembering that you can change your physical position anytime you choose. It's not about being a statue. There are no rewards for feeling uncomfortable because that would be the opposite to why you're listening. The complete opposite. So I think we start just by, as we often do, getting in touch with how you feel how you feel physically in the various parts of your body noticing which parts feel relaxed which parts feel tense maybe which parts feel neutral just feel alright you know And then we'll focus on your mind, noticing what's going on in your mind. Is your mind busy? Is it producing lots of thoughts or is it fairly quiet? Is it fast? Is it slow? You know, it's just getting in touch roughly with your mind and how it is in this moment. So we do that just by starting with your face. Just noticing how your face feels as a whole. Just as a a general area. So instead of focusing on your eyes or your forehead, your jaw, your mouth, your tongue, your teeth, your gums, you know, your ears, your eyebrows. I'm just going to focus just on how your face feels. Just noticing that feeling. Now we're going to focus on your neck, not just the front of your neck and your throat or the sides of your neck or the back of your neck with, uh, you know, that connection between your head and your back and your shoulders, but just noticing as a whole your your neck, has it? how is it feeling? right now, just your neck, the whole of it. Next, we're going to focus on your shoulders, arms and hands. So the whole, that whole section, right from the start of your shoulder all the way down to your fingertips. So we're not going to focus just on your shoulders. We're not going to focus just on your armpits. We're not going to focus just 
on the tops of your arms, where your biceps are. I'm not going to focus on your elbows or the crease in your elbows. I'm not going to focus just on your forearms or your wrists. I'm not going to focus just on your hands, the backs of your hands, your palms, your knuckles, your fingers. I'm not going to focus on any individual part of that area, just the whole of your arm from your shoulder to your fingertips. We're going to focus on both of those arms. Now, how do they feel? Focus on your back. Of course, there's a lot going on in your back. You've got your spine moving all the way through your neck, all the way down the middle of your back, all the way down to your lower back, joining into your hips. So we're not going to focus on your spine the feeling of your spine moving all the way down the middle of your back. We're not going to focus on the feelings of the muscles either side of your spine moving right the way from your neck all the way down the middle of your back. And any sensations there may be in those muscles either side of your spine as it goes all the way down into your lower back so we're not going to be focusing on that we won't focus on those muscles that go from where you're I guess between each shoulder blade those muscles that are there those muscles that just move across the top of your shoulders leading to your neck. Those muscles that lead from the back of your neck into your back. I'm not going to focus on the shoulder blades. I'm not going to focus on the muscles that lead from your armpits. To your upper back. I'm not going to focus on all those different muscles that are in your upper back that then lead to the middle of your back. I'm not going to focus on those parts of your back where your ribs are. We won't focus on the sides of your body, those parts that connect your back with your chest and with your stomach. And we're not going to focus on your lower back, that area which is very much connected to your hips. muscles that connect to your buttocks, that lower back region which is used so much in your life when you turn, when you bend, when you 
you know, all that kind of stuff. So we're not going to focus on any of that individual parts of your back. We're just going to focus on the back as a whole. Just as a whole, just from the, basically from where the back of your neck ends. Or you might want to include the back of your neck all the way down to the bottom of your back, your lower back, maybe the coccyx area, where your hips join. That whole area. So just focus on the whole area of your back. Now. focus on the front of your body, starting with basically where your the front of your neck leads to, so I guess you've got your collarbone, and then you've got your chest bone, you've got the muscles in your chest, or your breasts, you've got your ribs, underneath that lead further down there's the abdominal region the belly button you've got all the the sides of your body which connect the muscles to your back. So those side muscles from your armpit all the way down to your hips connecting your back to your front. Those muscles So there's that area above the belly button. And then there's that area below your belly button. Which then leads into your hips. Leading into your groin area. Leading into your legs. So that whole area there. And there's the parts that are just, they're not quite your side, but they're the, the sides of your front that sometimes feel a little bit different to the midsection of your front. Of course, in your day-to-day -day life, you're twisting, so the muscles in your stomach will be used, the muscles in your chest will be used. the movement of your chest when you breathe, the movement of your stomach also when you breathe, and that's more noticeable maybe when you're lying down. And then there's the movement of your body when you're walking, parts of your body may move, when you're walking along, such as your chest, your breasts, with me, my stomach, I've got a big belly, wobbling around all the time.
So there's a lot, there's a lot going on. Just as with the back of your body, with the front of your body. A lot of movement, a lot of activity, a lot of muscles being used, even though you may not notice them. Even people like myself with uh, the biggest belly in the world have muscles in the abdominal region. Everyone has muscles, so they're being used when you're walking, when you're lifting things, maybe. Getting up and down out of a chair. And of course, there's all that stuff going on inside as well. When you're eating, the digestion of your food. So we're not going to focus on any of that stuff. We're just going to notice how the front of your body feels right now. From where your neck ends, as your you know as your neck moves into the front of your body. If you want to include your neck, you can, of course. And just the whole of the front of your body moving down, all the way down to your navel. If you wish, you could include parts of your shoulders. Because when you're facing someone, the front of your body, your shoulders, part of your shoulders are in the front of your body. So maybe include that in that overall feeling that you experience now Now we're going to focus on the area, the back of your lower body. So we're going to include your buttocks, moving down your legs, the back of your legs all the way down to your ankles and then moving to the bottoms of your feet and when we focus on the front of your body we'll be focusing on the front of the feet and toes. So I'm not going to ask you to focus on your buttocks or that whole area really. It's hard to sometimes distinguish between your lower back where that ends and 
where kind of your buttocks start because it's so connected I know not physically it's connected but it feels there's a vague sensation of where one part starts and the other ends I suppose with me it's more obvious because my lower back is well my buttocks are so huge that uh, you can't you can't but tell the difference between my back and my bum um, I'm actually taller when I sit down gives you an idea how big my bum is I am when I sit I'm 5 foot 8 standing up I'm 6'4 when I'm sitting down I can paint the ceiling without a ladder so that area again it's a very sensitive area Muscle wise, it's a lot of parts of your 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 buttocks that are muscular. It's a very muscular area. Muscles at the side, muscles at the top. And when they're massaged, you can feel it. You can really feel the uh, tension releasing. And it's a very similar kind of feeling to having your lower back massaged. So there's very much a continuation of those muscles and the pleasure, pleasure and the pleasant relief you can get when those muscles relax. And then, of course, there's the sides of your hips. Because the whole hip area constantly being used when you're walking, moving, bending. And it can sometimes almost feel like this. It's hard to notice the difference between the various muscles involved in uh, particular activities but that sensation of where your sides of your lower body you know your stomach lead into your hips it's sort of like a continuous muscular feeling there when massaged or relaxed, it feels very pleasant to just to let that go, let the feelings, let the muscles relax deeply in your buttocks and around that area. It can be a nice release. And then moving down to the backs of your legs, just where the buttocks end. Just, you know, it's quite a sensitive area, quite a sensitive piece of skin as it moves down. For some reason, the back of the leg seems to be more I think just the skin's a bit more gentle than the front of the leg for some reason and then you've got the outside of your leg and you've got the inner leg which of course then leads to the front of your leg the muscles in the fronts of your legs so you've got the outside of your leg moving all the way down 
to your ankles. Then lead into your feet. So we're not going to focus on that. We're not going to focus on the inside of your leg. Which starts as it goes up to your groin area. And then leads all the way down. Again to the other side of your ankle. Passing through your knee. And that kind of gentle area of your skin, you can feel that at the back of your knee where the crease is. It just has a, a different texture, a different sense for some reason. But we're not going to be focusing on that. We're not going to be focusing on your groin area. And this is an area for, I guess, maybe obvious reasons or not, that is not really uh, mentioned, you know, in a relaxation sessions. Although that area is just as important as any other area of your body. It's just as relevant as any other part of your body. It's just, you know, some people may class talking about the genitals or the groin area as being rude when it's not really because in this context I'm not talking about making love or anything like that. This is about just focusing and noticing different parts of your body and to just ignore such an important part of your body in life you know generally in you know if if we didn't have that part we wouldn't be here in reality so and tension can be held there Stress and tension can be held in that area. So to be able to allow yourself to relax that area. Regardless of what you got there. You know what sex you are or whatever. To allow that, your groin area... The part, you know, above your groin. The muscles and you think all the different organs that are involved in that process in that area. The different muscles, the different... It's just a lot going on. And doesn't your groin deserve to feel relaxed? Just as much as your shoulders... Or your legs, or your back, or your chest, your stomach, your face. Doesn't your groin deserve just as much attention of comfort and letting go? But we're not going to focus on that part of, of your body. As we move down. So there's the backs of your thighs all the way down to the crease in your knee. We're not going to focus just on that part. All your calf muscles. Another part that really does, you know, take a fair bit of the strain of life. When you're walking around or depending on what you do, you may be using your, your calf muscles quite a lot. And perhaps we don't give too much attention even to any of our legs 
thighs or the calves. Perhaps it's just because we're used to them being there. Perhaps we don't really think about them. All that they do for us, all the, the benefits of the muscles working correctly. And how nice it feels when your legs relax. Completely. So moving past your calf muscles. So that's what we're going to include when we do actually focus. There's... There's that part of the back of your leg, which is your ankle, but it, it's almost a very sensitive area between your ankle and your heel, on the back of your leg. A part that really benefits from relaxing. I mean, your ankles themselves do so much. The chance to just let go completely and relax is an opportunity to be taken. That will just be part of the overall noticing. As you focus on the heels of your feet... And then the bottoms of your feet. All the way down to the pads just below your toes. And then of course your toes themselves. The bottoms of your toes. I mean the feet themselves, the bottoms of your feet. When you think about all the nerve endings and, you know, people, hundreds, thousands of people earn a living just by working on the bottoms of your feet. Over there, reflexologists, massage, other, you know, sorts of things or... Um, other feet workers <laughs> I can't remember what the names of them are but reflexology if you know or don't know works on the the bottoms of the feet and it can be so relaxing and having a foot massage if you ever get a chance for a, a professional foot massager it's a wonderful experience. So that part of your body, the bottoms of your feet, need to rest. Because we ask a lot of them, you know, not just to support our weight, but all the pressure put on them and to have to wear shoes and to be outside sometimes when it's cold. So they really do deserve to have a bit of a pampering. The bottoms of your feet. So I've gone through the different parts of your lower, the bottom part of your body. Your buttocks, legs and feet. The lower of your backs of your feet. So what I'm going to do now is focus on that area that I've mentioned. Notice how you feel now.
this and now. I'm going to focus on the front of your lower body, you know, your legs, all the way down to your toes. I'm going to start with the upper legs. Of course, we're focusing on as a whole. So we're not going to focus on these parts. So we're not going to focus on that part, which is right leads pretty much from your stomach leading right into the top of your leg, the front of your leg. There's all those muscles in the tops of your thighs. Probably the biggest muscle group that you have in your body. Your legs are the strongest part of your body, especially your thighs. Imagine. I weigh about 7,000 pounds and my legs, my little legs can hold my body. It's amazing what the different parts of our body do for us. When you actually think about it. It's so easy to feel grateful, actually, towards those individual parts of your body. So those muscles in the, the front of your thighs... That lead to your knees. And you've got all those muscles around your knees that support your knees so they can do what they need to do. And then you've got the muscles in the sides, the inner thigh, and the outside of your of your legs. I know that we've kind of already spoken about those muscles but in some ways the top half feels different as it leads into the middle which then connects to the backs of your legs and maybe the front inner thigh at the tops of your legs near your groin may feel different to the backs of your legs leading into your inner thigh. And we've already mentioned the groin area, which of course will be more prominent when you're laying on your back and as you're focusing on the front of your legs. And as you move down, the knee area is it's quite a large area considering the knees aren't really classed as a big part of your body. But they are quite big, really, when you think about it. You've got all the different parts of the knee. And the way it bends, the way it can be straight, and all those different muscles and the skin, the all that supports the knee and makes it what it is. And 
within is that almost like immediately you move into the shin area and the shins Kind of like the the most obvious protective area in the body, in a way. And we've got the skull, which protects our brain. But we just we don't think about that. It's just there. Uh, there's nothing because it's covered up, isn't it? It's covered up by skin. It's covered up by hair if you if you're lucky to have hair or doesn't you know whatever i've got hair but my hair looks like a wig honestly it's ridiculous it's like a scarecrow it looks like i've just um stolen that, the head off a scarecrow and put it on my own body that's what i look like and so the and your face and stuff see so you, you don't necessarily get to see the the shape of your skull unless sometimes I shave my head and you can see the shape and it's something for people to laugh at which is great make new friends but that protects your brain it's the most important thing that there is and then you've got your rib cage which protects your heart your heart and your lungs. The breastbone, of course, protects your heart, but your lungs are protected by your ribs, your major organs. It's like armour, but underneath the skin. But it's not obvious. Even the ribs, when you think about it, it's like, okay, that's obviously armour. But we don't think about it in that way necessarily. But the shins are almost shaped like a um, a shin pad that you would put on for playing football or soccer or uh, you know some kind of sport. It's almost shaped in a way. Um, that's obviously there to protect the lower leg. And that area feels different. You know, on the shin, there's no muscle. It's just cartilage or bone. There's muscle either side of the shin, but the actual shin itself. The actual bone itself feels different to the muscles either side. And underneath. And then you move down to that area where your shin ends and your ankle begins. And then you've got the sides of your ankle. The part that would actually would class as our ankle in some ways more than the whole area. Those bits where the like the bony bits are either side the inside and outside of your ankle area almost like big screws underneath the skin like someone screwed your feet on with nuts and bolts and then that leads to your the tops of your feet
And even though that part of the the foot in some ways can feel quite tough, you know, if, when you actually touch it, it's not really. It's quite a gentle part. The skin is sensitive. You can't, you don't touch it and it's just hard and bony. It is soft and it's fleshy. Yeah, it's hard in parts where the bones are. But it's also soft and gentle. And that leads, of course, to the sides of your feet. which tend to have a different kind of skin to the tops or the bottom. It's almost like it's a mixture between the bottom of your feet and the top of your feet. It's quite spongy, yet firm. Then as you move down, you move down towards your toes. The tops of your toes, which lead to your toenails. But there's also the, the parts of your toes that bend. The part in between your toes. That whole overall feeling of those individual toes. So as before, I'm not going to focus on any particular part of the front of your legs leading to your toes. I'm just going to now focus on that whole area. The front of your body. the tops, basically from your hips down really, all the way down to the tips of your toes, and you can focus on that part. 